Hey there, Chigi Beans. Let's paint some shoes. So I start with a permanent marker on just any pair of canvas uh, or uh, polyurethane shoes. Uh, I would say leather, but I don't think I've actually ever painted on leather. It's always been uh, synthetic materials, cotton. Um, I've done other ones before, but they're difficult. I'm going so quickly. I'm just drawing. Ah. Uh, the marker, since I know it's going to be asked, the marker that's being used is a Pelican Techno Liner 86. Uh, for the small uh, lines, <laughs> my brain isn't working. The small lines, the thin lines, it's a 0.3. I also use a 0.7 for larger ones. Thicker, not larger. I am silly. Anyways, uh, there's a lot of different markers you can use. Tea juice, uh, Stadler. Uh, don't use Sharpies, they bleed. The Stadler ones will bleed a bit too. Um, Sakura Microns, they have a really weird tip to them, so I prefer the Pelicans. Regardless, um, it's painted over, so it will fade a bit. It will have some issues if you don't um, set it before you paint. It will kind of bleed a tiny bit, but it won't bleed when you originally draw it on. See how fast this is going? You you may say, this is going way too fast for me to keep up. It was a two-hour video, and I sped it up quite a bit to fit within 15 minutes. You can go to the link right below this video uh, to the live stream channel, and you can watch the whole two-hour session in real time. It's there. I will not be deleting it. If I do delete it, I'll upload it somewhere else. Um, if Vimeo can handle it or something, I know YouTube can't. I just wanted to put uh, a really quick version here on YouTube kind of explaining what I'm doing and all I'm doing is just drawing this for a commission so things like love, peace, and understanding and hippie stuff that was what the little brief was from the person who commissioned it and uh, we looked at a few other shoes and paintings that I did previously and said something like this and then I uh, you know added some different things and it's quite inspired by artists like Peter Max and uh, a lot of pop art from the 60s and 70s I love doing the tongue of the shoe because it's just this little tiny bit of uh, the whole part and I like to grab as much as I can from both sides of the shoe, put it in there. It's fun. I don't know. I don't know if that explains why I love it so much, but there you go. So I just do all the line art first and I'm not, people asked earlier, I don't uh, have a sketch on the shoe itself before I start with the line art. So if I make a line with that marker, it's there. And it is permanent. And although I do paint over it, right now I'm typing to people or getting the other shoe. I don't quite know. I didn't cut this out, so I'll just keep talking. Um, I, I do paint over it, but you can't get it out without painting over that again with white. And when I use uh, white canvas shoes, I like to paint transparently with textile paints. So I tend to not use uh, an opaque white unless it's for little tiny details, you know, little highlights and uh, extra design bits. So if I have a mistake and I paint over it with white, it just, it kind of ruins the shoe. So if there's any problems, it has to become a part of the design. And the more you do stuff like this, the more you just kind of learn to work with that. Any little mistake, if it is a mistake, you just learn to live with it and uh, design around it. And eventually, you don't make as many because you've painted 120 pairs of shoes. I haven't counted. It might be up that high. I should go count. So we're still going. We're still doing. Um, I do, however, usually have a plan beforehand. I didn't always, but then I realized that it's really helpful when you have someone commission something to say, hey, while we wait for the shoes, or hey, while, you know, you say, do I want to do this? Because it tends to be a bit expensive. Um, I send over a sketch, a mock-up, if you will, of what the shoe will look like, and then that, like, it's right on my screen as I'm painting this uh, on my actual desk. That way I know what I'm doing. I always have that reference. Um, it is never exactly what I have in the mock-up because... You know, I can only plan so much, and then when I'm actually faced with creating the real thing, sometimes the design space is, you know, bigger, smaller, there isn't as much room, or I move it oddly, or, you know, there are limitations. Um, right here in this little line area underneath the piece, 
uh, I had some, see right there, that one line, I had some issues where I was like, wait, is that the line that I want? That's not exactly how it was in the mock-up. So I just created more little um, rainbows. And it was fine. And now there's a little umbrella. Peace umbrella! The problem with doing this in live stream is that uh, I would get into my little zen mode and completely forget to talk to people. And I didn't have my, uh, what is the word? Microphone. <laughs> You know the thing I'm using right now? I didn't have it on because I had my windows open and people were uh, using all their power tools that day for some reason. Like it was one of the first sunny days in a long while and people just ran outside to use them. Anyways, so liner, liner, liner everywhere. It's very exciting. It's very simple. Uh, soon we will get into the actual painting portion. In this video, there's only a small bit of the painting portion. I just wanted to show people what the liner is like because the other videos that I've done and live streams I've done, I tend to just be like, here's me already in the process of painting, I'll just turn the camera on. So now you get to see me paint a little bit. And I use, like I said, textile paints. I love Jacquard. I love Set of Color. Um, Dharma Trading has a whole bunch of other ones. You can get a lot of them at Dick Blick, too. You can get a lot of them at Michael's and Joann's. I think you can still get them there. Maybe not. I know that Dharma Trading is one of the best because they deal out with textiles in general, so all sorts of stuff. Oh, there's the actual design. As you can see, that's what I do. I pop into Paintful Sai and I just um, grab the pictures of the shoe right off Zappos because that's usually where I get the shoes from. It's the easiest place to get them. Uh, and I just quickly, you know, draw over it as though I'm actually using the shoe. That way I can kind of plan things because sometimes I'll think, oh yeah, this is a great idea, and it doesn't turn out. So, it's easier to plan things ahead of time, because then I can just delete it, and it's not a problem. Anyways, um, I'm just talking to people now. How exciting. Typa, 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 typa. Yep, that's me trying to type around the apparatus that's holding the camera. Okay, painting time now. It is important to note that when I'm painting like this, I'm not painting with the paint straight out of the bottle. They are mixed with an extender. That way you have a nice light color. I was using, um, let's see, I think fluorescent blue and an extender. And if you don't know much about extenders, you should learn. Seriously, it's very simple. It's very cool. I learned uh, all about extenders and um, just properties of paint when taking a, a print class. It was screen printing. I'm not saying you have to go to art school. No, just you can go look it up easily because they're going to have way more information than I do. Like what is extender and how does it work and why is it useful and needed? And I can tell you that, um, it keeps, uh, you're able to dilute the pigment of the paint, but you keep it at the right, uh, viscosity so that if you just, uh, diluted it with water, it, it wouldn't spread evenly. You wouldn't have an even coverage of light colored paint. You'd wind up with, um, it bleeding everywhere and it oversaturating certain spots and an uneven coverage and it just doesn't it doesn't go right so and this this also goes for uh, acrylic and oils and stuff like that there's different painting mediums that you can mix your paints with to change the quality to change the texture that way um, you are able to affect your paint without affecting uh, the actual structure of the paint itself, if that makes sense. That's probably not, those are probably not the right words. See, I told you, I could just go look it up. <laughs> That's why I'm terrible when people ask me questions. Hey, what's this? What's this for? Why? I'm not a teacher. I'm really bad at this. It's okay. I'm learning as you learn, and we all learn together. Yay! That's fun. <laughs> uh, anyways, so I like to go through and just paint uh, the entire shoe with whatever color I've just mixed at the time because they will dry and they dry funny. Textile paints dry very strange and you want to use them um, as fast as you possibly can. If you can speed yourself up to 950 times what you normally do, then you know, <laughs> you should go for that. Just go for that. It's good. Oh, and then I forgot bits there. Usually I give it more time to dry um, or just set the permanent marker. And this time I didn't, and you can't see on this video, and you can't see on the final shoe because uh, I went over a lot of the spots with a tiny, tiny brush, and I think I used just black again for, um, for the lines just to kind of beef them up a bit, but little bits like of the marker did kind of 
started to bleed a little and they got kind of a little bit fuzzy. Um, right there with the little circles, you can see some of it looks slightly kind of dirty-ish compared to other parts. That's why you give it time, but I was filming it at the time and doing a two-hour session. I said, well, it's fine. It'll work for now. And it did. Because a lot of those light blue parts eventually get shaded with some uh, darker blue, brighter blue, more fluorescent blue. I love bright fluorescent colors. Now we switch to yellow. The yellow is straight out of the bottle because it's very, very bright, and I want it to be very bright. Packs quite a punch. I didn't want to, you know, beat around the bush. There it is. There's the yellow. And it's a little cap. It was in my way. How exciting. Look how fast we paint. Blap, blap, blap. Um, so yeah, it does take me a while to do shoes like this, but I don't know. I enjoy it so much that it's all really, really rather worth it. Just today I saw um, photos straight from the factory of the new shoe line of my mass-produced shoes, and I'm very excited. I still don't know exactly when they will be available uh, in shop. There's some dates that are coming up that I can talk about soon-ish, but I have a big, um, what is the word, business trip in June that I get to see the new samples in person, and I get to find out how uh, one of the recent trade shows, it's next week at the time of saying this, the trade show is, I'll find out how that went, as I won't be there, because I'm not a salesperson in the least. I mean, artist. And I do not want to have to sit there and explain my craft to people. I'm sorry. That's probably really offensive to people who, um, I don't know, are French and don't have silly accents like that. No one does. No one does. Maybe I was being Leslie Curon. I, she was actually French, but, you know, I was watching a movie with her last night. Maybe I was being, um, Inspector Clouseau. <laughs> I don't know. I'm so sorry. God, that's so offensive. It's okay. You can all do terrible American accents and make fun of me. I'm really easy to make fun of. I mean, my accent, it's called Stuffed Up Nose. With a touch of speech impediment. It's like a new flavor. Touch of speech impediment. This green is also mixed green. It's a fluorescent green and a bit of yellow and some extender to make a pukey monkey green. It's a green that I like to... The name I like to call it. I love, love a bright lime green like that. It just brightens everything up. That's why it's a bright lime green. I do believe this is the last color that we'll be seeing. There's the bottom of the shoe. This is one of the other problems is I'll get lost in painting and I forget to look up and say, what does the camera see right now? What is it looking at? Paint in the leaves, paint in the leaves. How exciting. Aren't you excited? I am like so excited about painting the leaves. It's like leafus paintings. <laughs> Ooh, actually, another thing about you, I get to see a little bit of the purple. And the purple, I, um, I think if I did this a second time, I probably would have gone lighter on the purple. But in the end, I went really bright on the whole pair of shoes. And there'll be a link, again, below in the description where you can go see it. Uh, the purple I use straight from the, uh, jar, and it's a fluorescent purple. And it's just so bright and gorgeous and wonderful. Oh, how I love fluorescence. People do not use them enough. I don't understand you know, dark, muddy colors, and I mean, I understand them, but I just don't respond to them as well. And I'm glad when other people don't either, because then I get to paint wonderful, bright things, and it makes me happy. I mean, it's like sunshine. Look at that little guy. He goes, la, 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 I'm a cloud. Ha, ha. See, purple. Oh, it's so bright. Yeah, see, there you go. <laughs> um, um, it's, yeah, it's bright. I don't know. We're coming up to the end of the video. So I will talk to you all in another video. And that's it. And you can see the final product. There's other shoes that I'm working on. And you can commission them. Just email me. Bye.